Caster Wu is a little bit of an unfortunate release for this summer because I think she's really good and goes pretty much overlooked when it comes to the overall scope of the current summer event, but can you really blame people for overlooking her? Not only do we get the best AoE art servant in the game that comes with one of the best single target arts units in the game with arts Merlin dropping on a separate banner, and then we also get Scotty, the savior of Quick, and the other, you know, four star that I guess kind of get swept under the rug is Gareth, but that's because everybody kind of already knows that she's not super great. And then you have Wu, who's not the best four star to release, but she's also not the worst. So she kind of feels like she's in this middle category, but we're going to talk about her in today's video. And I think if you give Wu a shot, and if you look at her not as a DPS servant, because she doesn't really do a whole lot of damage, although she can get to a fairly respectable level if you start taking into account her undead power mod or the fact that you've probably done a metric butt ton of multis on the Scotty banner to try to get her and then walked away with quite a few copies of Wu. But if you instead try to use her as more of a support servant or like a secondary, maybe plug suit type style support, you'll get a lot more value out of her. One of the things that I was testing out in this video that you'll be seeing in the background is almost using her as say an Arash in a way where you use them to clear a wave if you want to use her as a farmer. That's not the only place you have to use her by the way. I was just testing it out to kind of see if I liked doing that. And you have her clear a wave and you can still get through with your main, you know, AOE Buster Looper. You know, for me, it was Morgan. But I think there is some kind of decent idea in there where if you have somebody that doesn't have the undead power mod and you're fighting undead enemies, which are not the most common enemy type, but thankfully Wu can turn on that power mod with her own NP. I think there's something there. Obviously, I do believe it's going to be better going into more CQ, advanced quests, or just boss fight style content because you get to hit them with the NP and you're going to be fighting those same enemies for, you know, a good couple of turns. So you could really take full advantage of that undead trait that you're putting on the enemies, not just for the power mod, but also just for things like her third skill that are very beneficial to the party and provide things that buster setups don't really have an ability to take advantage of. But then again, she's also got the manpower mod, which I think would be a lot better on her if they didn't kind of shaft her with the 20% battery. But hey, not every buster AOE servant has to be a buster looper. You know, sometimes we just take having nice little supports kind of sitting around. But let's just start talking about her in today's video. Now, the first thing that I wanted to harp on that I've really been enjoying when using Summer Wu in various team comps, as I do have her on both the JP and NA side of things, is that third skill that she's packing. I really like having an AoE stun in a Buster comp that also doubles as a 3k heal for the entire party and it removes the entire party's debuffs, which I just really enjoy. In one of the gameplays that I showed, I brought a Rider Martha by accident to clear this skill seal and NP gain down that the entire party got hit with because I was thinking more of just having, you know, somewhere we get some good damage clips in there and kind of showing what you can do that way. But I didn't take full advantage of this because it's really, really nice. You think about Koyanskaya or Merlin, you know, your main buster supports that you're going to be using, and they don't really have a way to remove debuffs if your party, you know, someone else gets stunned or they get charmed or maybe a main DPS that you have is getting hit with these massive attack down debuffs. You know, you don't really have a way to get rid of those without, you know, command codes or just trying to resist it outright with, say, you know, raw magic resistance or something along those lines. So having this in the back pocket is very, very nice that I found. It's, again, not the most game breaking thing, but it is just one of those things where you slide her into the team comms and it's really nice to have that, especially again, that you gain extra survivability because you have the AoE enemy stun as long as they're undead. But like I mentioned earlier, she gives the entire enemy party the undead trait for three turns that if it does matter to you, does proc first for her second skill, which gives her the power mod against undead enemies. And so this is functionally just going to be an AOE stun on the enemy party, which is again, super nice. Not only do you have Merlin that has the invincibility for your side of the things, but then you also have a way to kind of stop the opposing party from doing anything too detrimental. And then that's on top of her also charging the entire party's NP gauge by 20%, which is not nothing. Helping Merlin get to his own NP is very, very crucial in these Buster team comps because you want to be spamming that Garden of Avalon as often as you can. Realistically, you want to at least have two of those things going at any one time for, you know, the healing stacking, the star stacking, and then also the NP every single turn, obviously. 
And she not only helps him do that with the 20% battery, but she also gives him a 20% NP gain buff as she gives that to the entire party and also gives everybody that 15% attack and buster buff, which is really good because now you're double buffing the entire party. So if you have some other pseudo DPS or a main DPS that you're using, they're also getting the benefits of offensive buffs, right? Really, the one thing that she lacks is a way to take advantage of crit stars. You know, there's no crit damage buff. She doesn't gen stars every single turn. She doesn't even bomb stars, you know, uh, for one time on one of her skills. But I think that's fine because, again, in the ways that I've been using her, I really like bringing Wu around with Merlin. I think they combo rather nicely with one another because you have the immediate pretty decent heal on her third skill. And then you have Merlin giving, you know, the HP every single turn on his NP. I think it combos relatively well. Obviously, you can kind of get blown back if the enemy is hitting you really, really hard because not having double Merlin for the heals every single turn that are stacking can be a bit detrimental. But hey, you know, sometimes you just want to use a different servant. You don't always want to do like double S tier servants. You know, sometimes you want to have a little bit of fun and, you know, going down to someone like Wu, who might be more of like a B plus or just kind of like a flat A servant is really fun. You know, if you want to get that different style of gameplay. I do just believe that unfortunately she's going to be overlooked because she only has that 20% battery. If she had the ability to do buster farming, you know, with again, at least needing a 30% battery, I think so many people would look more fondly on this servant because I mean, dude, she gives them the undead trait first and she also has man attribute power mods. So functionally you go up against man attribute enemies, you got 180%, you know, power mod, not including what Koyan Skaya would give on her second skill, but because she's not able to do that, she's going to get overlooked which again i think really sucks because unlike say people like dobra or someone like canis that kind of get overlooked because they seem like they would be built rather well going into buster farming i don't think looking at her in that aspect is an incorrect way to look at her. Instead, you should be looking at her, and again, I'm not saying she's as good as Koyinsky or Oberon, but looking at her in the same way that you look at them, where they are these support type servants that just have damaging NPs, because you know sometimes it's really nice to get that extra chip damage, or again, if you're fighting the right alignment enemy, you know, whether they're man or they, again, you turn on the undead power mod, they might be able to do some pretty decent damage every now and then. But again, you know, taking full advantage of that immensely powerful charisma she has, you know, being able to stun the enemy party, heal, debuff, cleanse, and then also control the enemy party's NP with that second skill as well. I think that is the right way to be looking at her. So, you know, next time you want to go into a challenge course, and maybe you did pull a ton of copies of Summer Wu over here, you know, you can use her in some farming comps. I mean, sure, you can do some funny stuff, I'm sure. You know, like I showed in the background, there are some interesting comps to say the least that you can, you know, whip out and try to make her work. But I don't think that's the right way to be looking at it. I think you should keep your eyes peeled for, you know, an upcoming advanced quest or, you know, an upcoming boss fight or something along those lines and try taking her out to one of those because not only will she probably surprise you with how good she's going to be over there, but also just maybe consider slotting in a DPS servant, someone like Ibuki or, you know, Ruler Martha, a fellow buster servant that has an undead power mod that actually you'd be surprised how much they can really take advantage of something like that. Or you can always just use a Summer Wu over here with the OG Skahawk and let her just throw tactical nuke gay bulgs at people, you know, for really as long as your little heart desires. But let me know in the comments section down below what you think about Summer Wu. Have you taken her out in the new challenge quest? Have you used her during the story and kind of gotten a nice gauge for how good she is? You know, again, if you haven't, test her out. She's not bad. She will surprise you with how good she is. I mean, even just being immune to mental debuffs is also really, really nice. Just ensuring that, you know, she can't get like stunned or anything along those lines. It's just really, really nice. It's just very convenient things that she's able to do. So try her out. Literally, it's Wu is back and she's bigger than ever. So, you know, you might as well use her a little bit. And if you can't find any other reason to use her, I mean, she's hot at the very least. So <laughs> with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have a nice rest of your day and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.